All right, so let's have a look at the integral of 3x squared plus 8 divided by x cubed plus 4x with respect to x. Quite a while ago, I did a video on this problem using the partial fractions approach, and we got the answer of 2 by the log of x plus a half times the log of x squared plus 4 and of course plus a constant. So this is the result that we got using the partial fraction decomposition approach. In this video, let's have a look at the same problem using the f prime of x on fx approach. Because while there's nothing wrong with the partial fractions approach, this one I think is a bit more efficient because it cuts out the need to find the partial fractions. And because we're lazy mathematicians, if there's a less strenuous way to get the same result for a particular problem, we certainly like to pursue that. So let's have a look at this integrand again. This integrand I can rewrite as a quotient of two functions. So I have p of x on the top divided by q of x on the bottom. And of course p of x being equal to 3x squared plus 8 and q of x being x cubed plus 4x. And what we see here is if we take the derivative of the q of x, which equals 3x squared plus 4, and compare it to the function p, we've almost got the derivative of the denominator with the function p, because the 3x squared term is common, it's just annoying that we have this 8 and 4 here, so these are the only two different aspects of it. But there is certainly nothing stopping me from writing p of x as 3, so p of x equals 3x squared plus 4 plus 4, and then dividing that by q of x, so we have over x cubed plus 4x. And of course there's nothing stopping me from separating this part from this part into two fractions. So I can write this as 3x squared plus 4 divided by x cubed plus 4x plus 4 divided by x cubed plus 4x. So thus the integral of 3x cubed, sorry, 3x squared plus 8 divided by x cubed plus 4x is equal to the integral of 3x squared plus 4 divided by 3x cubed plus 4x plus 4 divided by 3x cubed, sorry, x cubed plus 4x with respect to x. And of course I can separate these into two integrals. So with the first integral, we simply have the integral of the derivative of the function q divided by the function q and this of course is equal to the log of the function q. Which is x cubed plus 4x. But what about this trailing integral? Well in my last video, which I'll link to now, we rewrote this as 4 by x to the negative 3 divided by 1 plus 4 by x to the negative 2 and if we take this 4 out the front and multiply the numerator by negative 8, and if we multiply by negative 8, we also have to divide by negative 8, you can also see that now we've got this second integral in the form of f prime of x divided by f of x. So the result of this, the 4 and the negative 8 cancels out to be negative a half, or reduces to negative a half. This integrates to the log of the denominator, which is 1 plus 4 by, well, I'll just write this as 4 divided by x squared. And of course, we need to include the integration constant c. Now let's compare to make sure that we're getting the right result. So with partial fractions, we got the integral of 3x squared plus 8 divided by x cubed plus 4x is equal to 2 log of x plus a half of the log of x squared plus 4. 
I'll just leave off the constant for now. And for this method that we've done in the current video, we got the result of the log of x cubed plus 4x minus a half by the log 1 plus 4 divided by x squared. So notice how I've used parentheses, and that's because x squared plus 4 and 1 plus 4 divided by x squared can never be a positive, sorry, can never be a negative number if we're dealing with real values of x. So it's okay to use parentheses here. But the question is, is this equal to this? Well, here's where we can use our skills in manipulating logarithms to answer this question. So in the first instance, 2 log of x plus a half by the log of x squared plus 4. I can rewrite this as the log of x squared plus the log of x squared plus 4 to the power of a half. And of course when we add two logs we can combine them as the log of x squared by the square root of x squared plus 4. So of course powers of a half equal the square root. Now in the second instance we've got the log of x cubed plus 4x minus a half by the log of 1 plus 4 divided by x squared. Okay, so I'll write this in green to be a little bit clearer. I can't do too much with the front term, so I'll write this as the log of x cubed plus 4x. The second term I can write as the log of 1 plus 4 divided by x squared to the power of a negative a half. Well, that green isn't that much different from the yellow, so let me change the colors again to blue. So combining these, I've got log of x cubed plus 4x divided by, so negative in x of course means 1 over, and the a half is again the square root, 1 plus 4 divided by x squared. What I'm going to do now is to rationalize the denominator and to do this I just multiply by the square root of 1 plus 4x, so 4 divided by x squared, divided by the square root of 1 plus 4 divided by x squared. Okay, I'll just write a little bit more to the left so we have space. So we have equals log of x cubed plus 4x, these are in parentheses, by the square root of 1 plus 4 divided by x squared all over 1 plus 4 divided by x squared. Okay, so we've got a 4 on x squared here. Let's turn this into a x squared, so the 1 into an x squared, so that I can rewrite this as a fraction. I can rewrite the fraction as x squared plus 4 divided by x squared. And I'll do the same thing for the term inside the square root. So we have x squared plus 4 divided by x squared. Okay, we have the log of x cubed plus 4x. Now we've got the square root of a quotient which I can rewrite as the square root of x squared plus 4 divided by the square root of x squared, which of course the square root and the square cancels each other, all over x squared plus 4 divided by x squared. We can take this 1 on x term here into the parentheses, so we have the log of x squared plus 4 by the square root of x squared plus 4 all over x squared plus 4 divided by x squared. So we have an x squared plus 4 here and an x squared plus 4 here and these can cancel. So effectively we have the square root of x squared plus 4 divided by 1 on x squared, which of course equals the log of x squared by the square root of x squared plus 4. So I'll scroll back up a little bit, and of course we have 
the same answers for the two different methods. Okay, so just remember all of this algebra was just a check, and I think you'll agree that the second method, as we've done here, is a little bit more efficient than if we were to do the partial fractions approach, even though the answer looks a little bit more complicated. Okay, so that will do it for this video. If you found this useful, please give me a like and subscribe to my channel for more videos that may help you with your studies. Feel free to ask me any question by using the comments section below. And as always, I'd really appreciate any small donation. As helping me out a little bit will allow me to help you a lot more in the future. So check the description below on how you can throw me a little tip. Until next time, best of luck with your studies and thanks for watching.